Hi, my name is James. I'm a hobbyist game developer and I recently came across a wonderful game development tool called Visionaire Studio. It allows you to easily create a variety of adventure games as well as some other genres. The editor works on both Windows and OS X and can create games that run on, well, both of those, as well as Linux, iOS, and Android. So if you're an indie game developer, it covers all your bases. Although Visionaire is fairly cheap for what it does, there is a limited free, freeware version that allows you to evaluate the app. Okay, so if you're just playing around with Visionaire Studio to kind of get familiar with it, you don't really need to follow this tutorial. Uh, however, when it comes time that you really want to do a project, uh, I really recommend watching this tutorial because it gets you off on the right foot. Before you create a new game, it's best to start with some housekeeping. That'll make your life a little easier down the road with Visionaire. Visionaire requires that you store all your game assets within the same folder structure as the Visionaire Studio file. So that means game assets need to be stored either in the same folder as the game file or within a subfolder. So uh, it's often best to create a folder to store your game in and then some subfolders to store your game assets in. Uh, by doing this, you're going to save yourself a lot of headaches down the road. If you, how you did kind of design this is totally up to you, but I'm just going to show you the design that I use. All right. So whether you're using Windows Explorer or you're using uh, Finder in OS X, um, I'm just going to show you the, the principle is the exact same. I'm using OS X and uh, using um, uh, Finder to show you uh, the structure that I'm using right now. Okay, so uh, you'll notice right away that there's several subfolders. This here is the uh, my example uh, Visionaire Studio document. And under that, within the root of the same folder that contains that file, I have various other folders, including uh, docs, uh, GFX, SFX for graphics and sound effects, and video. Then underneath each of these are actually more subfolders for more specific items that are related to that. So with Visionaire Studio, uh, it needs everything that's relative to the document in order to load it and remember where it's at. Uh, so I like to get myself organized and uh, in, in fact, even under things like scenes and characters, I'll have actually more subfolders to store more of the uh, graphics and the individual files under. You could, if you wanted to, use a naming convention instead uh, that allows you to sort the files in a particular order so that they all group together instead of using folders. But I like folders because I don't like seeing this total sea of files staring at me. I want to deal with a specific maybe scene or character, I want to group them all under one folder and know what that is. So uh, under Docs, I'm storing my game design and any other documentation that I create under uh, for that game. Uh, it's a good practice to write all that up ahead of time, um, at least the kind of the basic concepts of what you're doing so that you've got a plan for how you're going to tackle your game. Then under each of these subfolders, you want to copy in your art assets. You don't have to do it uh, before you create your game. You can do it as you go along. But when it comes time to load those art assets, you'll be loading them from these subfolders, not from perhaps another folder because Visionaire won't allow you to do that. It won't copy a file from elsewhere in your hard drive to this these subfolders. You have to copy them in and then load the file from there. Uh, so once you've got your 
basic folder structure set up however you want to do it. You don't have to have the whole shebang in right away. Uh, but once you've got the basic uh, design in, uh, just for your graphics and so on, then you can create your Visionaire Studio document and start your game. So I hope that gives you an idea of how to uh, set up a project and once you've got that done you can just start creating your game and the game kind of comes together much more easily when you use a structure like this. Okay, I hope that was helpful. We'll uh, catch you on the next tutorial. Thanks. Bye-bye.